you'll learn it so bad. Don't, don't even try to think about it right now because it, it's really complicated well, how it, it actually does like it. But it is through these nonpolar amino acid residues. So why don't the, the proteins use the, the membrane of the bulger? They do. But then they're recollected and then they bud off again. So yeah, it still goes through the Golgi. I'm just skipping that step. Um, it's all based off those signals. These signals on these proteins are what causes the clustering of the correct proteins together to all go to the right place. So in the Golgi, the Golgi will read these signals and say, oh, all these red ones in the membrane need to go to the plasma membrane. Let's cluster them, them together and make a vesicle with them. And then that will bud off and fuse to the plasma membrane. Um, this is the rough ER. The lumen just means the inside of the ER. Okay. So um, the smooth ER is right next to it and just gives it more lipids? Yeah, so smooth ER is lipid synthesis and it also does detoxification reactions. Um, we don't really care about the smooth ER besides those two things. Um, the rough ER is where all your protein folding is going on. The rough ER is that assembly line of those Polish people in that in my mind. Smooth ER is a whole, totally different part of the company. Maybe the, the hiring agency for the, the Polish employees. I don't when know. They yeah, when, when all the, when they leave, yeah, they hire new ones. I don't, I don't know how that analogy would work out. Um, Yeah, so it's the, the energy from the electrons is causing the pumping of the pro protons. If you were to ask that as an essay question, what should we be writing? You know, like if you want us to draw it out, would there be like steps like this? Mm -hmm. that we should There's not really steps in the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain is a lot easier to do than anything. You can draw, you can show complex one is converting NADH back to NADH. Less. And then you can show the electrons are being integrated into the protein and moving through the chain, and all the pumping is happening. You just, you want to draw it and then just kind of explain that you're using the energy from the electrons to create this gradient, and that's coupled to the synthesis of the radio. So you'd explain that piece of it, but draw most of the rest. So the transfer of electrons to oxygen causes it so to like go water. into water. Um, that's something I guess I didn't really write out completely. But if you have O2 going to H2O, what are you adding? What's the difference between O2 and 2H2O? Four hydrogens. So if you're taking four H pluses, so you have four positive charges, what else do you have to add to this? Four negative charges, so you have four electrons. So it's the actual addition of these electrons to oxygen that causes it to form the water. So that's, what, that's why we make water, is because this oxygen needs electrons added to it, and then it just results in water. So it's still oxidation reduction and all that good stuff. Um, and then the protein chain, you Griffith kind of showed that it's not proteins because he heat killed these cells, which would denature proteins. Avery proved that it was.
Griffith kind of suggested it was, but he never proved it. Don't ask me why they did that. Uh, Hershey cheese afterwards. Or was it afterwards? Was it afterwards? Oh. Hershey Chase was after. They did a whole different experiment. Avery and Griffith did the same experiment. Avery just added a few extra steps. Um, Hershey Chase did that virus experiment where they allowed the virus to attach and then they were like, is it the protein that's being injected into the cell causing infection or is it the DNA that's being injected that causes infection? Their idea was whatever's causing the infection <coughs> is the genetic material. So since they found that the radioactive phosphates, which are part of DNA, are incorporated into um, inside the cell. They found that it was inside the cell with the black and the bottom of the centrifuge. Um, they showed that DNA is what's causing the infection. So the protein is in all the liquid outside. It was outside of the cell and never entered the inside. So the protein coat had nothing to do with it. Yeah, so proteins like cysteine have sulfur in them. So cysteine and uh, methionine both have sulfur, but nowhere in DNA. Sulfur is nowhere in DNA. Whereas phosphate, no amino acid has a phosphate in it. So anywhere that they have radioactive phosphate, they know that has to be DNA. Anywhere they have radioactive sulfur, they know that has to be the protein. I had a question. So it's trying to design a novel chemical compound that can be reduced 
reduced by cytochrome C. And cyanide, it's a cyanide inhibits the ability for cytochrome C to reduce oxygen. So if we found some new chemical that it could reduce, we could make it happen. Unless cyanide shuts down complex four completely. If it shut down the entire complex, then, then there's no way for that to put electrons on anything. It doesn't matter if it's oxygen or the smell of the compound. But since it says cyanide shuts down the ability for it to complex four to put electrons onto oxygen specifically, if we were to able to create some other thing that could accept those electrons, we could reactivate the electron transfer. So that would somehow be your answer. You probably want to word it better, but I think that answered the whole question. Um, yeah, I mean, the real point is just to, if we have nowhere to put these electrons, it's going to cause a traffic jam. And then we can't, then the whole electron transport should take the back and we're shut down. And that's, they still become the hydrogens, but they just wouldn't be able to go down into these. No, you wouldn't even be pumping hydrogens. But then if it's, I mean, if one in three years they're pumping hydrogens, right? No, because think. Oh, it's a completely back to the Think, yeah, think of these electrons as being cars on a highway. If, if you shut down the only exit of this highway, which is oxygen, cars are going to back up all the way through all the complexes. And it's the movement of cars that pumps hydrogens. If the cars are stopped, there's no hydrogen. So these electrons need to be moving in order to pump. So no oxygen, no movement, no pumping, no gradient. No yeah. You can still do substrate level because you can still do glycolysis if you have fermentation. So. And just to clarify, substrate phosphorylation, you can do it anaerobically as well, right? Yeah, it's the only type you can do.
transmembrane protein is a transport protein. So you can have a transmembrane protein that doesn't transport anything across it. It could work as a signaling thing. Um, so you could have something that <coughs> So this would be a transmembrane protein that isn't able to pump anything across it, but maybe this side of the protein will bind to something and it'll cause a conformational change in this side of the protein that creates a signal inside. So it can, it can essentially take an ex, external signal and turn it into an internal signal. cellular communication to happen, it, this needs to, let's say we have some little sugar on here, that sugar needs to interact with some other cell that has a sugar. And then when this sugar binds to some other cell, it will signal that cell to do something. So is that where junctions come in? Yeah, so junction, like, that would be like your, um, uh, like, desmosome type junctions, that kind of stuff. Um, but if we had like oscillation on the inside, is that ever going to see another cell? So there's no point in putting a signal there because it will be read by the cell that already put the signal there. So it already knows what it's doing. And the enzyme connects to the interface. Yeah. Did he he talked about that much detail? Well, touched on the integrins. Yeah. So. Not exactly, it's the, the integrins poke out of the cell and they will, they are used to connect to other integrins of other cells. Um, they are adhesion molecules, so if you're trying to have two cells adhere to one another and stay in communication constantly, you'll have integrins poking out of both cells and they'll actually attach to one another and then they'll stay together. 
um, something like like neurons. When neurons connect to one another, have synapses onto another neuron. You have a bunch of integrins in between these two holding them together. So that if something happens, if you like get bumped a little too hard, these aren't going to just fall off. You know, if you're playing football and your like head gets like hit and you have a concussion, you're not going to break these connections because the integrins will hold them together. So when you have a substrate binding, it's kind of like the same thing? It's... Or no. Kind of just like um, when a substrate binds, it's more based off those hydrogen bonds and ionic interactions. Integrins are larger, much larger than substrate and interactions. So they, they're like two sticks that will stick together. But how they stick together is still through hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds, but it's a much larger surface area than a substrate. Um, that level of detail that I'm just going to get into. Um, yeah. How does fiber necklace thing to that? How do what? Fiber necklace. Yeah. Is that like the actual thing? some way, it's an adhesion molecule. I mean, nectarins at least are adhesion molecules, so I'm assuming fibronectins are. Um, they're causing two cells to adhere to one another. How much do we need to know about like, microtubules and motor proteins? So. Um, I think he's going to talk more about that for the final. Okay. Um, I, I don't think he really mentioned it at all besides that motor proteins walk along the particles <coughs> and act in. Um, for the final, he's going to get into how these motor proteins are actually walking. It's actually, it's pretty damn cool. They like, have like these little goofy legs that they like, little ATP aces and they'll like flip over, grab, and then flip over and grab and then release. And like, you know, just, like watching it on YouTube, it looks like a goofy little like clown thing walking. And it like carries, that's what's actually carried these vesicles from place to place. So that's how you get a vesicle from the ER to the Golgi faithfully without, without getting off track and stuff. And that's and that, called dying, right? Um, that'd be, um, that'd be the other one, um, kinesin. Kinesin carries vesicles, dynein carries That's going to be on my test. I think that's a little outside of. I think that's for the final kind of stuff. I would know though that dynein and kinesin are motor proteins. That might be one of those multiple choice type questions. What's Kristen for? Kristine. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Well, it's like C R I S T. A. Oh, the the Kristines. Yeah. The, um, they're the folds in the Golgi. Oh, okay. So like how these, any fold that you see, so in the mitochondria, this inner membrane, how it has these folds. These folds increase the surface area and they're called the crystates. Same with the Golgi, it increases the surface area. Um, your small intestines also have what's like a larger form of crystates. It just refers to the folds. 